And by designing the whole system together, hardware and software, we're able to make the things you love about your Mac even better. Your Mac now instantly wakes from sleep, just like the iPhone and iPad. Let me show you, but first, let's set the mood. How cool is that? Last week, Apple released all of their new line of M1 Macs, but alongside that, they also had the public release of the new macOS Big Sur. Now, there's a lot of videos currently online highlighting all the great features of this new macOS update. It ranges from things like a massive design overhaul, it makes it feel a little bit more like the iPad and a little bit like the iPhone, right down to the tiny details, like for example, the sound effects have now also changed. When I mean sound effects, I mean things like when you move something to the trash or you drag something from one folder to another folder, you hear a little notification sound. Those have all changed and it's been a massive, complete upgrade to any of the previous Mac OS's. Now I've been using Mac OS Big Sur ever since launch day and this video is gonna be slightly different. I'm gonna be highlighting the five key things which may or may not deter you from upgrading and these are the things that are very common. I've come across users online saying the same things as well. It's mainly for your benefit to understand if this is the right upgrade for you. Just before I begin, these are the specs of my MacBook Pro that I have in front of me, which is incredibly fast and is capable of handling any OS upgrades. So just bear this in mind when I discuss anything about performance. A lot of the things that I will be talking about performance wise are things that the users have reported online. I've come across various different articles that are reporting the same thing and how to fix them. So although I can basically handle any types of performance capabilities, not everyone might. So just bear that in mind whilst you're watching this video. Without further ado, let's dive in. Number one, it is a very large file size. To upgrade to macOS Big Sur, you need at least 12 to 15 gigabytes of storage space. And a lot of people that I've come across, they really use the max amount of storage that they possibly can on their hard drives. I have friends that have MacBook Airs, 256 gigabyte max and they're pretty much on 200 gigabytes already. So as you get closer to maxing out your storage space, you will get performance problems. So just bear that in mind when you're thinking about upgrading to this because it is a massive file. Number two is the incompatibility. The first thing to note is, is your MacBook or your Mac compatible with this upgrade? Here's a list of all the devices that macOS Big Sur is compatible with. If any of your devices fall outside of this, the upgrade will not work or it might not even be available for you guys to upgrade. So just make sure you're aware that you have a device that can upgrade to this. Secondly, what I've noticed is about the app updates. So once I've installed macOS Big Sur, I was expecting a couple of apps here and there to be incompatible with the new OS and I was correct. So as you can see here, as soon as I logged in, I immediately saw a couple of pop-ups requiring app updates which were not compatible with the OS and they wouldn't function properly until I had updated those specific apps. So you may have a lot of third party apps that you've downloaded which would require specifically a new version of the app which might not be available at the time the new OS is out. So that might take a month, it could take a couple of weeks, it could take much longer. So just be aware if there's anything else that you think might not be available, check with the app developers to see if they are Mac OS Big Sur ready. If not, you might have to wait and that app might be unusable. But then there's also things where you can have plugins inside apps that don't work. So for example, Final Cut Pro X. If you're a video editor like myself and you use this to create your videos, then there could be some plugins you've installed inside Final Cut Pro X that may stop working. Here's an example. So as I was using a color grading application called Cinema Grade, if I drag this onto the clip, it will be incompatible. I contacted Cinema Grade. They said they haven't updated their plugin specifically for Big Sur just yet. So right now, I won't be able to use this plugin to color grade my footage. So number three is performance. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, my MacBook Pro is pretty fast and it can handle the performance pretty well. However, there has been a lot of users reporting their macOS slowing down considerably once they upgraded. So take a look at some of these articles. There's been reports of it slowing down when the disk space has started to run out. There's been advice to run specific cleaning applications to delete all of the chunk files in your system. There's also recommendations to disable certain things that open up 
once you log in in case they are taking up a lot of the processing power but generally these are all common practices that you would need to do to speed up any macbook on any os so if you are getting slow performance then these are the things that you would diagnose with you will trial it you will troubleshoot doing it this way specifically with mac os big sur there's been a lot of reports possibly because a lot of people don't have a fast processor on their devices or possibly because they're just running out of storage space something as simple as that so just be aware check those things first before you upgrade because you may get your macbook or your mac to slow down slightly number four battery life now based on everything that i've just spoken about in terms of performance it using up a lot of your space all of that kind of stuff contributes to how much battery life you can run off on your device especially your macbooks without having your external power connected to it. So here's a clip of me using my MacBook Pro once it hits a 100% battery. I double checked to see how much remaining battery time there was left. At 100% on Catalina before I upgraded, it said there was four hours and 19 minutes that I can use it for. I ran the same test on Big Sur. I charged everything to 100%. I calculated it and it gave me a battery life remaining of two hours and nine minutes, which is less than half so something definitely happened there now although this is a very fast spec macbook pro i didn't believe that it would be two hours so i tested it i carried on working without opening any additional intensive applications those two battery lives by the way had the exact same applications open so i only had chrome and a couple of other things open i didn't have anything else running in the background so it was a like for like comparison it didn't last two hours it gave me about three hours and 50 minutes, which was still a little bit less than what it was like on Catalina. So I felt like the battery reduction was slightly less and a lot of people that are reporting their battery life has reduced drastically, may be correct in some ways. However, once I've used this a couple of days later, I felt like the battery life was absolutely fine. It was back up to more than four hours. And if I wasn't doing anything heavy, if I just leave it there, I maybe step away, I've gone to get a coffee, for example, then I can probably get the same or even more than it was before. But initially, once I had upgraded, I did notice that initial drop in battery life. And finally, number five, I wanted to highlight this. This might be a small thing, but for me, the small things make a biggest difference. And even till today, I experienced this issue, which is around the widgets panel. Now, this is a complete design overhaul. The widgets panel does look more like the iOS on iPhones and on iPads, which is absolutely fine. But when I used to use the widgets panel on Catalina and all of my previous OS's before this, I used to use the calculator widget on this. So I used to just swipe left on the trackpad, the calculator was there and I was able to do quick calculations because I use that very frequently. Now, however, the calculator widget is gone. When I now swipe left, the widgets panel you can add more widgets, you can get them from the App Store as well. However, there's no calculator ones. So I find myself continually swiping to open the widgets panel, not seeing the calculator there, then I have to open the calculator app separately. I've been doing that almost every day for a week and it's something I still need to get used to. So if you're like me and you did use the calculator on the widgets panel from previously, if you upgrade, forget about it, it's gone. And most likely, if they don't do an update to bring it back, it's never coming back. So that's a shame. And there is other tiny little things that I've noticed here and there, but things I can just get used to. Those are my top five things that I've noticed with some of the reasons why you may or may not upgrade to macOS Big Sur. So let me know what you guys think. If you have upgraded and you found other problems, then do drop a comment down below. I'd like to hear from you. And finally, I'd just like to thank the sponsors of this video, ExpressVPN. If you want the ultimate solution for private browsing and accessing content outside of your own countries, this is the app to get. It works perfectly with macOS Big Sur. I've tested it. The top features for this, it connects to over 160 servers. You can select the country yourself and you have over 94 countries for the ultimate private browsing. It opens up a whole world of new content that is geo restricted and it's much safer to use on public Wi-Fi's. I do tend to go out and work in co-working spaces 
where they have public Wi-Fi's and I use ExpressVPN for that all the time. You can also stream sports if you didn't know that is not available in your country so that's very convenient to have especially for all you sports fans out there and this even works with on-demand streaming services like Netflix or Amazon Prime, Hulu etc. And if you guys want to use ExpressVPN I've got a perfect discount for you guys, three months of absolute free usage. Click the link in the description below, check them out, I know you're going to love it, I use it all the time. If there's anything else you guys want to know, again drop a comment, make sure you subscribe, tons more videos coming out which I know you're going to like. Hit the like button, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.